This is a recipe for whole grain pancakes. We're going to start out with one and a quarter cup of whole grain oats, and they need to be put in a blender or a food processor and grind them until they're fine, just to make it more like an oat, oat flour. shake it up a little bit. One more shake. So now we have an oat flour. We need one and a quarter cups of whole wheat flour. So you overfill slightly and then level off. And I'll put, add that to my bowl that already has my one and quarter, one and one fourth cup of oatmeal flour. Overfill, level off, add it to the bowl. Then I need one and three fourths teaspoon of baking soda. This is one teaspoon. And I need three fourths more, so that's a half plus a quarter. You can use the top of the box to level off. Now I need three-fourths teaspoon of baking powder, so that's a half plus a quarter. And then I need a half teaspoon of salt. Overfill, if possible, kind of level it back off into the container. I'm actually going to use a whisk to combine the ingredients. I decided that would work better. Um, and you also could sift the ingredients together as well. But just make sure you get both flours and all of your baking powder, baking soda, and salt very well combined. Okay, then we're going to move on to the next bowl. In a smaller separate bowl, we're going to combine all of our liquids. So, I need one egg. I need a quarter cup of sugar, a quarter cup of applesauce. The applesauce is taking place of vegetable oil. It's a much healthier alternative and it gives you a, some, a little bit of your fruit for the day. Okay, so a quarter cup of applesauce. Then I need one and a quarter cup of buttermilk.
As you can see, buttermilk is much thicker than regular milk. It's not made with butter. It is just has a culture in it, which makes it a little bit of a sour taste. Um, if you don't have buttermilk at home, you can use a um, cookbook, you add regular milk, um, take white milk, and add lemon juice to it to help make it buttermilk. Um, but this is one and a quarter cup of buttermilk. Then I need three fourths cup of regular milk. And the recipe says to mix this together with an electric mixer. So since this is the first time I'm making this recipe, I'm going to do what it says. I would imagine you could just mix this with a whisk, but we'll go ahead and use an electric mixer. until that's combined. Then we mix the liquid into the dry. And when you mix liquid into a dry, you typically make a well, which means that you spread the flour mixture out around the bowl and you have a, a well in the middle. And then pour all of our liquids in. and combine this well. So it's very well combined. And the next step is we'll get our griddle ready. If you look carefully at the batter, you'll see that bubbles have started to form. Um, there's a few still bubbling. You want to let the batter rest for about five minutes after you mix it together. That gives the baking soda and the baking powder time to activate. Now, we have put our skillet on 375, and I will show you how to make sure that the skillet is hot. Uh, you just want to drop some drops of water on, and if it sizzles or skittles across, then you know that this skillet's hot enough and ready to go. You do want to make sure that the skillet is hot when you start. So now I need to get some oil and put a little bit of oil down before I start to, to cook my pancakes. Okay, I have a little bit of oil down on the skillet, and you're going to use your third cup measuring cup to put, pour the batter on the griddle. And by using a measuring spoon that or a measuring cup, that means you can kind of keep all your pancakes about the same size so that they cook evenly as well. You have to have patience when you're making pancakes. Do not, as you can see, these ones here are starting to bubble. That's just starting to bubble. You have to wait until the bubbles show in the center of the pancake. Do not start flipping them too soon, or you'll end up with just a big blob of batter everywhere. So we're going to wait longer until these are ready, and then I'll show you when they're ready.
while you're waiting for all of your pancakes to fry, you can put your oven at 200 degrees. And then you can put your cooked pancakes, the ones that are already fried, on a baking sheet and then set them in the oven just to keep them warm while you're waiting for your second batch to cook. When you're ready to put your second batch on, you want to put a little bit of oil on again. Spread it around. I think I mentioned before, but I'm not sure if I got edited out. Uh, you don't need a lot of oil. You just need a little bit because we do have Teflon skillets. So um, the only reason you need some oil is just because the Teflon's been a little bit scratched. And while we're waiting for these to cook, you can pan over and see what you do with the pancakes that you're going to put in the oven to keep warm.